I asked you guys a week ago, I told you, hey, these, these ladies fought three times in kickboxing. The, bu the bullet beat her all three times. I'm just curious because I genuinely did not know. Why? Well, who was the promoter? What promoter kept making the same girls fight and they went all the way to a third fight when the outcome of the previous two had not changed? That just generally doesn't happen in fighting. I asked you guys for the answer. You guys let me know. For those of you that don't know the answer, it was real simple. It was a tournament. They kept meeting up in tournaments. Joanna kept entering, the bullet kept entering. They kept beating the previous competition, boom, there's your gold medal match. They kept meeting up. That was the answer to that, but Joanna goes out there and she fights her, and I, she just looked fantastic. Joanna is such a good competitor. She is just such a good competitor. She's a very skilled fighter, but she's a very good competitor, and she wants to win. I think there's something very neat about that. She also respected the bullet, and I don't know that she has ever respected another opponent. I think that that hurt a little bit. That was my perspective. She's the one that would have to share. But she also took a big risk walking in there a fourth time against a young lady who had beaten her not just once, not just twice, but three times. I think there was a lot of courage there and I don't think that that story ever got told. I think because of some of Joanna's antics, if you will, in the past that people were just happy to see her lose, perhaps. But I think you guys would join, uh, join me in admitting that it was a very courageous move. It was a very valiant effort. And for the fourth time, much like the third, second, and first, the better fighter won, and it just simply wasn't her. But she's in a very tough spot right now. I don't know. If, is it okay if I personalize this, uh, guys, without sounding too arrogant? I don't know if anybody could really tell you what it's like to be in that spot better than me. Better than me. And I'll tell you this, a little pat on my back, but I'm really just trying to, I'm just really, really trying to share for you, for anybody that didn't follow my career, I was in the same spot. I was the second best fighter in the world for a meaningful period of time. Any way you want to do it, anybody you want to give me, I'll beat them all. Except one guy. In any way you want to do it, in any amount of times you want to give them, I just can't beat that guy. So what do I do? This is where Joanna's at. So guess what she did? She switched weight classes. Made it all the way back to the finals. All the way back to the gold medal match. And any which way you want to do it, and apparently no matter how many times you want to do it, she just can't beat that one other athlete. So what do you do? She is in a very rare and coveted spot. She is the second best fighter in the world in two different divisions at the same time. I offer this to you guys. Yeah, I, I realize there's some pompousness in the way I say it, but I swear I don't mean it as that. As much as is when I look at Joe, I was the first fighter ever in mixed martial arts history to be ranked in the top 10. That's how they do the rankings, up to 10. In the top 10, in two different weight classes simultaneously. First guy who's ever done. So I knew about spreading it around, and I knew about trying to get to the top, and I knew about not making it. And what do you do then? Tough question. I found the answer. I found the answer for me, which is I was a competitor and I wanted to be champion, but I still wanted to stay busy and I still wanted to fight. So I, I, as an individual, did not care who the name was or in which weight class. I just wanted to compete and that was okay with me. But that's not okay for everybody. Some people have a very hard time taking a step down. It can just be a very hard thing in life. And this is the spot that Joanna's in. I don't know where she goes from here, but I do know that her next fight is not for the world championship. I do know that her next fight is not going to be a five round title fight. I don't know what, what weight class it will be. I don't know mentally how much she wants to get up and try to reclaim and reclimb that mountain. I would trust at a young age and I would trust with the tenacity and the competitiveness that I've seen from her that she will take a little time off, get right back in the gym and wait for the next opportunity. I will also offer for you that that is the right way to go about this. But it can be a very hard thing to do, to take that step down. And some athletes don't do it very well. There is many scenarios where Joanna does become world champion. I think that it's going to be very tough for her to return to 115 pounds, but I will just offer you one scenario. Look, she's having a hard time with Rose. She's done that fight twice. She lost twice. She's not getting a third fight with Rose. That's simply not happening for the world championship. Okay? But in some period of time, Rose will lose. That's what happens to athletes in this sport. Perhaps Joanna could then come in and beat the person that beat Rose. Perhaps we have a round robin situation. 
We just saw this with Dominic Cruz and TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt. Get all three of these guys together and A equals B and B equals C, but A doesn't equal C. We see it all the time. It makes for a lot of fun in sport. Maybe that's the road that Joanna has to take. I would suggest if we're going that route, that it is more likely to do that at 115 pounds. I just don't know if anyone can deal with the bullet right now. Because here's the good news for the bullet, which is the bad news for Joanna in fairness to the situation. The bullet's hardest work is now behind her. Whoever the bullet is going to fight next will not be as hard of a fight as Joanna. It just simply won't. So the likelihood and the road as we are to just sit here and try to speculate into a crystal ball of which we admit does not exist, that strap's probably going to be around the bullet's waist for a while. And if you were to go back and just look at that match, who would have thought? Girls that are stand-up fighters who have fought each other three times in kickboxing and the only thing different in this contest as far as the rules go in the stand-up realm is the size of the gloves. One of the girls, being Joanna, left home and began to train at a grappling-heavy American top team in Florida two years ago. So if you're just staring at it on paper and you think anything is going to change between these two athletes, perhaps it's going to be a little bit of wrestling. And I guess with the evidence that we've been giving, that would favor Joanna. However, it favored the bullet. The story of this fight, if you guys watched it, look, they both punched and kicked each other. They both had good head movement. They both pushed the they, These ladies did a great job. The story of this fight was the takedowns. And not only was it takedowns by the champ, she took her down the same way each time and landed in side control. The relevance to landing in side control is Joanna now has to work extra hard to get back up to her feet and use a whole lot of energy, which is very important in a fist fight. The bullet gets to catch her breath. The bullet gets to lay there should she choose. Bullet didn't look to advance position. She didn't look to go to mount. She wasn't looking for Kimuras and side chokes. She wasn't looking for any of that stuff. She was looking to hold her down, make Joanna use the energy, get her back on her feet. Joanna's now a little bit more tired than she was before that exchange started. And the bullet is winning in the judges' eyes. And ultimately, it went to the judges. And ultimately, that fight came down to those takedowns and the bullet's ability to land in side control, which is just not something that we would have thought prior to the contest. Nobody was predicting the bullet's going to win by takedown via side control. Nah, come on. Don't say you thought that. Nobody thought that. So that made it for a very, a very interesting fight. But it also made for two athletes that you could look at and really have a respect for and go, wow, these gals can compete. These gals can go out there and they want it. If you watch Joanna's post-fight interview where she tried to get through and burst out in tears, there, there, there was a real sign in that. When an athlete cares, and a lot of this is about who wants it more and who cares, when it comes to us, the fan, getting behind them and going on the journey, and when it's authentic and real and the athlete cares, there is something there as far as the journey goes that makes us come along for the ride. And I really thought as it pertains to both Ortega and as it pertains to Joanna, that in many ways, both of them won in defeat.